Hi, I'm Richard Oldfield, a cinematographer and colorist based in Melbourne, Australia. It's so important for any film production, large or small, to have all the creative departments work in harmony, all directing their efforts to achieve the director's vision. Having a show lot to monitor with on set and in post enables all the creative departments to work towards the same visual goal. Look Designer is a Swiss army knife of a plugin for DaVinci Resolve, and it can be used in so many ways. In this video, I'll show you my workflow for designing a custom show LUT using Look Designer, and then how I work with that LUT to manage my color pipeline during the grade. I'll be demonstrating this on a comedy short that I worked on recently. I'll also show you how the plugin Grain Lab gives a moving image added texture with its generative grain. Let's head over to Resolve. I've got a few clips from the short film on the timeline. I just wanted to say a thank you to our director and co-writer, Neve Donahoe, and cinematographer Alice Stevens for allowing me to use this footage. Let's start by taking a look at our reference images. You can see that although this was a comedy, which is usually associated with warmer tones and a flatter contrast, the director wanted to bring in cooler tones, a subtle lean towards green in the shadows, and more of an energetic contrast. I'll bring up two clips from the production's camera tests. I asked our DP to shoot the camera tests with the same color temperature lighting fixtures that would be used during the principal photography. In our case, this was 5600 Kelvin, and to expose for the skin. We didn't need a variety of test clips to help build the show lot, as this film was shot in just the one location. Okay, so let's begin to build the show lot with Look Designer, using our references as a guide. I'll drag them onto our timeline to give us a side-by-side. -side. Make sure the interpolation is set to tetrahedral for more accurate rendering. I decided that this reference from the film The Secret Life of Walter Mitty would be a good place to start. Of course references are just a guide, but we might as well head over to IMDB and take a look at the tech specs of this film. We can see that it was shot on various 35mm Kodak film negatives and it was printed on Kodak 2383. And I'll keep that in mind when I'm building the show LUT. So let's drop on Look Designer and begin to build a show LUT that's designed for the camera's color space, gamma and contrast. I'll bring up our reference. This production was shot in Canon's Cinema Log 2. So let's select that as our input profile. Look Designer has you covered in most cases with your delivery requirements. And it is really great to have this flexibility. For this production, I'll be delivering in Rec. 709, so I'll choose one of the four options here. Rec. 709 by Ari is based on Ari's tonal and gamut mapping. Rec. 709 by CL gives you a large volume of gamut and is a good place to start if you're looking to use the film profiles. Resolve Color Management 2 allows you to work with DaVinci's color management and Rec. 709 ODT is very neutral and it's based on the SMPT standard. I'm going to be using the film profiles to build my show LUT, so I'll use Rec. 709 by CL to have a wider gamut to start with. Next, I'll choose my contrast. A number of options to choose from here. 2383. I'll dial that in. Yep, that's looking good. Then my print stock. Again, 2383 is putting me in the ballpark. But I need to pull back that saturation just a little bit. And I'll do that by enabling the film print emulation. This also gives us a more accurate film profile. Just dialing that one in. Around 0.8 seems to be giving us a good result. I'll blend my look back to the original with the global blend slider. This helps just roll things off a little bit. Now 
Next, I'll choose my negative. And I really like these Gen 2 options. These profiles only affect your color and not the contrast of your image, which really helps dial in the color you want. Again, I'll look at the Kodak options. 5279 feels good to me. I'll change the white point and bring in some cooler tones with the temperature dial. Cooling things off a little bit. I'll head over to the printer lights. Try and bring in some color separation. Really just trying to get the skin tones to separate from that back wall. Then onto the subtractive color. This tool set mimics how light reacts when it passes through the three colored layers of emulsion found inside a film roll, removing the frequencies of light. Sliding these dials to the right expands saturation in the shadows, really giving your image a heavier feel with deeper color. You'll just need to adjust for your loss of exposure here with the push and pull slider. I'm happy with that. I think it's looking good. Look Designer has made technically checking your LUTs as you build them really easy, with access to test images right inside the plugin. Looking at the tone map, this lets you check that you haven't changed the tonal response of your captured footage. We want our neutral gray lines to be on or around 400, and our top and bottom to round off nicely with nothing clipping. The saturation ramp chart represents fully desaturated at the top to full saturation at the bottom. Looking at the vector scope, we can see how well the colors are distributed and check for any out of gamut errors. We're looking here for any, any banding or distortion. The lightness ramp shows us how the highlights are rolling off and again, we're looking here for any banding. Cinematographers will love this one. The Ed Lachman zones represent light in a non-linear way, in true stops. We perceive light logarithmically, log base 2, and we now have a way to monitor that inside DaVinci Resolve. Grey represents neutral grey, yellow one stop over, orange two stops, and so on. We have the highlights on the face hitting just one stop over, and I'm happy with this. Now we can export a 33 point cube for onset monitoring and a 65 point cube for post production. Then we just grab a still for ourselves. And now we're ready for the grade. For this production, I set up my grading workflow to emulate a traditional film process. When shooting on film, a specific film negative would be chosen to meet the creative intent of the production. And once exposed, this negative would be processed at the lab and printed back onto a print stock for distribution. So right now we have a show LUT, acting as both my film negative and my print stock. But when it comes time to grade, I like to split this into two instances of look designer. One instance to act as an IDT and film negative on the group pre-clip level, and the other instance to act as my print stock and ODT on the timeline level. I'll head over to the timeline level and drop on our show LUT. For this workflow, I'm going to work in the ARRI Log C color space, so I'll need to consider that when setting up my IDT and ODT for this pipeline. I'll set the input profile to expect ARRI Log C, and for this instance of Look Designer, I'm not going to need the film negative, so I'm just going to bypass that. I find my workflow does change project to project, but generally I group my shots as per the scenes in the script, and this lets me ripple corrections throughout the scenes. So I'm going to make an office group, and I'll also make a boardroom group.
heading over to the group pre-clip level. I'll apply my show LUT again and set it up to transform my color space into RE log C. This instance will also act as my film negative, so I'm just going to need to bypass everything else. I would apply any MTF next, if needed. Next comes the grain, and another one of ColorLab's powerful plugins for DaVinci Resolve is GrainLab. I'll drop that on. GrainLab adds not just a layer of grain that sits on top of the image, but a generative grain that blends with the camera and interacts with the image. We have control over the shadows, All the mids, with this body intensity, and the spark intensity are highlights. Having the grain constantly change like this, we're able to trick many compression algorithms into leaving more grain in the image. The added texture and depth excites the image, pulling the viewer closer to the story. If you apply Grain Lab on the group pre-clip level, all the color gets applied further down the pipeline, which allows consistency when switching output transforms, for example from SDR to HDR. I'll stick with Kodak 35mm and call this my group pre-clip node tree. Grab a still and apply it to all of my groups. I now have a very good starting point for the grade and I have a look that adheres to all of the aesthetic choices I made when I was building the show LUT. Next, I'll apply a fixed node tree on the clip level to the entire project. And I'll run a quick exposure pass, once again, calling on Look Designer. If I activate the Ed Luckman zones on the timeline level, I can then monitor and adjust my exposure in the first node of my fixed node tree structure using offset. Giving me a timeline ready for the director and cinematographer to have a look at. Just slightly balancing the exposure. Our DP did a great job exposing this, so there's not much I have to do here at all. And we now have a timeline ready for the director and cinematographer. And thanks to having the show LUT carry through the entire color pipeline, there won't be any surprises now when it's time to grade. Cinematographers and colorists have to be both technical and creative. These two plugins from Color Lab help simplify a lot of the technical aspects of color management, which allows for more time to play with color and find the heart of your story. Thanks to the Color Lab team, I look forward to what they'll come up with next, and thank you for watching.